my name is Heidi Crockett. I'm a licensed psychotherapist. I'm doing a blog on the neuroscience of awareness. I just did a video on this sweep loop and the plane of possibility uh, from the last video. And the idea is that you're able to have 50% of your awareness in that open plane of possibility, which is also the hub of the wheel of awareness, and then 50% of your attention at the peaks of activation the peaks are like the rim of the will where you're having all these thoughts or words or activities or your heart is beating so you're having sensation all those are peak activity and so the idea is when you have good mind sight which is when you grow your awareness which is what this uh, video blog is about is that you're also able to have 50 percent of your attention in that open plane of possibility and do a sweep loop. So this video is gonna be about the default mode network, and it's a part of your brain and part of your mind, as in part of your way of thinking, uh, that interferes with your capacity to do this sweep loop the way I've described it. So the default mode network is, it's about 10 structures in the brain that light up, and it's like a sense of who you are related to the social order. It's what we did to survive. Uh, we kind of assessed our environment. So it's a really intelligent mechanism. We all have a default mode. There's nothing wrong with it. The problem is that when it's not integrated with other parts of the brain, and we're seeing that with the technology, for example, a lot of teenagers, when they get likes on Instagram, they found that it strengthens the default mode network. Um, Judson Brewer's research in his book, The Craving Mind, talks about that. So what we want to do is we want to integrate the default mode. So today I'm just going to show a little bit about what the default mode is. So if you can see my video. So the default mode network is also uh, negativity bias or mind wandering. Uh, over there, it's covering up PCC, the posterior cingulate cortex, which is kind of midline in the back. It's one of the main areas, but like about 10 areas light up, and the default mode is kind of midline, but it also involves some lateral parts. And again, it's just this part of our thinking that's automatic. That's the reason why I'm bringing it up. And what we want to do is we want to have some awareness of our thoughts being automatic and that would be being in the open plane of possibility. Uh, so this is an interesting study where they did a text message data and they found that when people mind wander more, uh, that they're more unhappy. And that when people are able to meditate or what I would call have a mindful awareness practice, a map that strengthens their mind sight and gives them greater brain fitness, uh, that that meditation helps them recognize when they're mind wandering and it leads them to be happier and have a greater state of awareness, which is what this blog is all about. So the default mode is exactly the same. You have a default mode. I have a default mode. Unless you have dementia or schizophrenia, we all have a default mode and we think about other people and our faults. So Basically, it's the way things should be, and it's always kind of thinking about the past or the future, and the kicker is that it's basically always dissatisfied. So we don't mind wander to happiness, which is why we want to engage in more mindfulness activities that grows our capacity to be in that sweep loop, and we can widen our window of tolerance and all these things change the quality of our integration and the, our, how, our quality of awareness and presence. So here's a quote, the default mode is not good or bad by itself, it's when it's not integrated. So this whole blog is about what we can do to link up highly differentiated systems, which is what integration is. So in this sense, what we would wanna do is we have the default mode, but we want it to be linked up to other parts of the brain. So when you do Qigong, for example, where you're breathing in and out through the nose and you're doing a movement and you're aware of your body, your whole body, you feel your feet on the ground, what you're doing is 
the temporal parietal junction, which is more lateral, is integrating with the default mode network, and that's helping offset the power of the default mode network. So here is a chart. It says we all exist on the spectrum from a poorly integrated default mode all the way to a well integrated. So a person who does more activities that cultivate interoception, like that Qigong I mentioned, or that will of awareness exercise, that's going to help the default mode. Uh, so that's why we want to be mindful, for example, of the social media or things that cause the default mode network to become stronger. And I think it also has to do with central focus vision. Uh, so I think just kind of trying to pay attention more to peripheral vision, uh, that also helps with people who are more logical, linear, literal, more left-brained. Uh, you'll, you'll, that also helps integrate the default mode network is paying attention to peripheral vision and people's facial expressions. Uh, so I'm going to end this soon, but the idea is that we want our default mode network to be more integrated. I've given some suggestions for inter, like cultivating activities like the will of awareness and interoception, and all those things would help us have that sweep loop capacity so that we could be in the open plane of possibility as we're aware of peaks of activation. So that's a little bit on the default mode network. Uh, write down below, write your comments, and we can talk more. I do a nonviolent communication, I call it peaceful communication class, and I show this slide and I put no self in red, and at the top I put ahimsa consciousness, because uh, I talk about how um, that way of communicating, looking at feelings and needs, if it's done correctly uh, as a process, again, just like the mind is an emergent process, nonviolent communication is a process. It's a quality of attention and awareness um, by paying attention to feelings and needs that has a person come more from their prefrontal cortex, not their judging warlike black, white thinking, limbic brain. Um, so that the nonviolent communication is a way, another way um, that we can cultivate higher brain functions and looking at feelings and needs. And again, the key with all these things is we're trying to integrate these different brain functions like the default mode. Uh, but the no self, the expanded sense of self, uh, that comes back to the neuroscience of awareness. When you look at the nine domains of integration in interpersonal neurobiology, and people who have higher states of integration, they feel an expanded sense of self, they feel connected with all life, they have greater altruism. And so that is what happens when you have more awareness and a more integrated brain. And that's why I'm doing these blogs so we can talk about it. And I'm through your questions, I think we're gonna be able to post more interesting comments about what this no self looks like and means in our daily lives and when we're in that open plane of possibility and in that sweep loop, what that feels like in our body, what the quality of presence is like, and how that relates to us being able to be more aware and help make other people more aware. So thanks for listening.